Hi right, everybody, I'm back doing another live stream. I was like five minutes late, but the new film, well, for next year, anyway, Scott Coons and Dolph Lundgren again doing another film and got Ryan K. Wang Ten. I think I don't I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but it's in post-production and that, so it's expected in 2022. And then, um, yeah, it's called Section 8, which there is another film which was done in 2006 called Section 8, but the 8 is the number... Um, like presentation then the lettering so uh, not to be confused with another film called section 8 but this one got quite a lot of fucking well not a lot but there's a few action stars in it and that well one or two. Obviously, you've got Dolph Lundgren and Scott Atkins in that. But, yeah. The uh, plot line, though, is a bit fucking... Like... Uh, thin on the the plot and that, but I don't care. It it looks like it's going to be some good action anyway, because um, the there ain't no trailer though, but <clears throat> there is a, tr a trailer of another film that I'm. I'll I'll be showing after I've been talking about the Scott Kings uh film like that yeah because uh, yeah the plot is after avenging the murder of his family, a former soldier is sprung from a prison and recruited by a shadowy government agency. Now, I had a look and I don't know who exactly the like main protagonist in this film is. But it's got to be out of um, Scott Atkins or Dolph Lundgren, I'm thinking, because the cast, there's Mickey Rock, Rock in it, but um, he's got a bit part in it because um, I read in an article that like he just got flown in to do his parts and that. So he's definitely in it, but he's not the main character. Now, I think Scott Atkins could be the main character in this film because he's got like a, a good sort of name as a, he's Leonard Lucky and that. And Dolph Lundgren as Tom Marson. So, don't know. I, I think it, it could be a bit, bit of a, like, team-up. It could, could be a bit of a team-up effort going on. So, maybe Dolph Lundgren and Scott Atkins share the main sort of protagonist role in that. But, yeah, it's got Damon Bullery in and... Ryan K110 Robert Lasado, which um 
he plays usually a uh, like nasty bastard in the he's he's always usually playing the bad guy. I think he has played a good guy, but most of the time he he plays the bad guy and um he's he's got one of them sort of like um faces because I think he has fucking done some shit in his time, you know, and so he's got them faces that know what is is fucking like to be a bad guy and that, and so he can portray bad guys good. And then Maurice Comte, yeah, and Jeffrey Blake in that, yeah, don't don't know. What they're gonna be doing in this film, but got Paul Salon, Tracy Perez, Justin Frustenfield, Mary Christina Brown, Jessica Medna, Kimmy Alexander, Robert. Leno, Stephen Curtis, Sapphire, Brandon Bowers, and Jay Mon Montavo. Now, yeah, they're not exactly well-known action stars here, but I think some of them have been in actiony drama films. So this is like looking like it's going to be a all out action film because like there's the yeah so look looks like on set like filming somewhere and that and obviously there's Scott Atkins and there that's why I think he could be the main character because he's looking like he could be anyway. Well, yeah, and Anthony J. Ricker, Ed Stein, Christian Sesma, who's directing it and that, uh, Robert Leon and Brandon Bowers and Oscar Graven in Section 8. Yes, uh, and like some dude, yeah, he he looks like he'd be playing the bad guy sort of thing. He's got that sort of like bad guy look, and like yeah, that I don't I don't know what, what that is, as in if it's the front cover or what, but. Is looking action either depot. Yeah. Uh, close that. Yes, post production and that expected. 2020 and that. Uh, yeah, and was a bit of a um, thingy with Vicky uh, Rock the, did an interview, I think, in that, but. Well, not really an interview, but there's go. Mickey Rock joins Dolph Lundgren in, in action movies, section eight. AFM. I don't even know what that means. Action a fucking must. Maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah, just one brain. Like, yeah, like Mickey Rock is joining the cast of the action movie Section Eight. Sales agent. The exchange is introducing the movie to international buyers during the virtual American film market, which wraps Friday. Well, yeah, this. But when was this done? November the fifth, so yeah, like a week ago ish, nearly a week ago. So yeah, it's definitely finished now. <laughs> um, yeah, the cast also includes actor Dolph Lundgren, Scott Atkins, Ryan Kewanten, Dermot Murray, and Blue October's lead singer Justine. Best and field as previously announced, yeah. And yeah, there ain't much to go on because it just basically gives the synopsis of the movie is the story of a former soldier who, after avenging the murder of his family, is sprung from a prison and recruited by a shadowy government agency. Still don't tell you always the soldier that gets recruited, but I'm I'm still thinking it's Scott Atkins because um, I think Dolph Lundgren's a bit too old because like if Dolph Lundgren's because it, it'd be someone a bit young to, or, or gets recruited, and so Dolph Lundgren would be a bit too old to be recruited, so. I'm thinking it must be Scott Atkins in the like major protagonist role. It will be directed by Christian Sesma and Payday, the Night Crew, working from an original screenplay by Chad Law, who did The Hit List, Black Water, and Josh. Rigged Way, The Sector, and Howlers. It is produced by Baron Burroughs of Firebrand. So, yeah, it's definitely, and like, yeah, it says got Rooks, many credits include the wrestler, Sin City, Angel Eye, Iron Man 2, okay, nine and a half weeks, loads. But, like, yeah. Insane much on who's who and um, who's playing who, but as I say, I reckon it's Scott Kings is being the lead sort of main protagonist role with like probably Dolph Lundgren's character recruiting him and then probably a bit of a team up. I don't know. Still in pro- post production and that, but they should be finishing post production soon, so there'll be a trailer getting released soon. Well, yeah, uh, Rock is represented by Framework Entertainment and Eastern. Lad and so Bell, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, there's a few more articles or oh, you get mainly. Saying what I've said, but I don't belong to Scott Atkins and Ryan K110 to face off in action movie section eight. In that, yeah, don't belong to Scott Atkins and Ryan 
to 110 are set to go head to head in an upcoming action movie se section 8 the hollywood reporter has learned yeah based on the original screenplay by chad law the hit list drive hard that's films he's done i think and Josh Frigway, The Sector and Howlers, are set to direct by Christian Sesma, who did Pay Dirt and the Night Crew. The film comes from Firebrands. Reunited with Lundgren for a third time following 2017's altitude and upcoming christmas action comedy plus pups alone yeah. firebrand founder brandon bowers will produce it yeah section eight will tell the story of your former yeah uh, um the film will, will mark the fifth on-screen tussle between Rocky and the Masters of the Universe legend Dolph Lundgren and Boykett Undisputed star Scott Atkins after the Expendables 2 Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning and Legendary and the upcoming Castle Falls True Blood star Ryan Kewen Ten meanwhile will square off against the two for the first time yeah we couldn't be more excited to have such an incredible cast joining the section eight Dolph, scott and ryan are so uniquely talented we can't wait to see them clash on the big screen said bowers oh burrows alongside pups alone and castle falls which have recently Directed, produced, and starred in Dolph Lundgren as a busy state or slate ahead of him. He's set to reprise his Aquaman role as King Nerus in Aquaman and The Last Kingdom and return for the recently announced fourth Expendables installment. So yeah, Scott Atkins, meanwhile, is currently filming John Wick Chapter 4 and One Shot. I think that One Shot's been filmed, though, because it was probably done in one shot. But <laughs> And recently, wrapped Netflix Day Shift alongside Jamie Foxx. So, yeah, I saw a little bit of that, but it looked a bit slow and boring, that Day Shift, so I didn't watch much of it. But I didn't know it had Scott Atkins in, but yeah. Uh, um, K110 recently started in the Crackle series, the Oath, Boom House Television, Sc Scarred, Lars. Garrett, yeah, lies and is currently working on the FX drama series plot. Kindred. Longer Run is represented by Wonder Street, the Garish Agency, and Bloom Herigot. Atkins by Link Entertainment. The Garish Agency, the BWH Agency, and Goodman G now, and K110 by the Very Talent and Literacy Agency, and Jack Away Austin. I don't really. I don't, I read that before and and I couldn't even read I I don't know what they're really talking about. I think they're just talking about what the fucking companies and who's representing them and that. I don't give a fuck. 
I'm more fucking interested in in like what the action is going to be like because it should be good. I'm thinking is 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 going to be good because you got Scott Atkins and fucking Dolph Lundgren in films. You know the action is going to be good. These soy-nerd bitches won't want to go anywhere near this film. It'll be one of them where they'll be like, oh no, I want to pretend I'm drunk and watch a lot of Wonder Woman 1984. Fuck off. You go watch Wonder Woman 1984, you fucking soy-nerd bitch. I'll watch fucking this section eight. Well, yeah. There's so like synopsis from there. Not much like, but you know. It's in post production. Yeah, now this one is a bit fucking crazy. Mickey Rupert. Oh, this one not really say much, but I'm just showing this one to fucking show this picture of Mickey Rock. Rock. Like, what the fuck are you doing, Mickey? Even though. He ain't looking too bad on that, but what's with them fucking glasses? But they don't care sometimes. You know, when you got so much money, apart from people like me, who's gonna fucking tell Mickey Rock they look a fucking twat in them glasses? Well, Mickey Rock will feature alongside Dolph Lundgren in the new action movie, Section 8. Yeah, just basically say Mickey Rock being cast along Dolph Lundgren in the action film, Section 8. The 69-year-old star joins previously announced cast members Lundgren, Scott Atkins, Ryan, Kewinton, Dame Mulray, and Justine... Fruston Field. The movie is the story of a former soldier who, after avenging the murder of his family, is sprung from a prison and recruited by a shadow government agency. Yeah, you just got to say, Christian. Zemo's directing and that. Oh, yeah. He's directing the film and a uh, and an original screenplay by Chad Law and Josh Rigsway. The mo- movie is being produced by Brandon Bowers of Firebrand. He said, Mickey's raw energy and unique style are such a great addition to the Section 8, which you, you've got to go on it to Mickey... Rock, he will come in and fucking act like fuck. He, Mickey Rock's one of them where he probably won't be in a film if he didn't want to act in it. So he's he's gonna do his acting in it. And he's a good actor, Mickey Rock, so he can sell the part, whatever part he he will be doing. But yeah. It's hair and all. It doesn't even look like a wig. It looks more like just some Velcro stuck on his head. But Mickey Rock, good actor in that. So what if his hair looks a bit fucking air plugged, but Yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> that's pretty much 
Well, I can discuss on section eight right now because there's no fucking trailer or anything. And there ain't much of a fucking plot synopsis going neither, but that's how it goes. What you can be sure of is those are signed bitches who fucking want to watch female action films. Won't want to see this. I don't, I don't think they want to see any sort of film where fucking they've got masculine fucking dudes who know how to do action films. It's going to make them feel like a little bit of a soy bitch. As I say, if you're a soy nerd bitch, the last thing you want to see is some masculine ass fucking dude kicking ass. That just reminds you of how much of a soy nerd bitch you are. Now, obviously, some of these soy nerd bitches are fucking bit the bullet and started going down to the gym and doing weights. But even then, they still don't want to see some dude fucking doing moves that are fucking so fast and quick that their man can't comprehend the fucking physical um, force and speed that trained fucking martial artists can do. But that's not fucking our problem. That's fucking theirs. And fuck them. They can go watch their fucking Wonder Vision. That's what Wonder Vision was made for. Little soy nerd bitches who fucking don't want to see masculine action. And I think the the wanting to make other female fucking action, well, crap action films. So there's plenty of films for them to see. Because here's a fucking article for you. If you think I'm full of shit, right? Well, get a load of this bitch. I was a bit shocked, but look at this sign. Mmm, DC set to replace Billy Batson with Mary Marvel. Yay! No, the Champions of Shazam series. Yeah, so there we go. Here's what these sign in. Bitches will be fucking watching Shazam with tits, which I've got to admit, the tit part I like, but the female fucking action in it is going to be shit. And it probably ain't going to be too shit because it is going to be mostly special effects. It ain't, it ain't going to be like Black Widow where some of them scenes, it's like, well, we can't afford to do much special effects. You're going to have to do it for real. Oh, shit, you can't do it. We're going to have to get a man in. And then swap change at the end to make it look like, oh, yeah, a woman can do that, you know. Oh, really? I don't think so, because I saw fucking Scallop Johansson, and she was fucking... <laughs> I wouldn't say slow as fuck, but compared to dudes, she was slow as fuck. Well, should I say, compared to dudes who train in fucking... Physical combat, fuck it. She was slow as fuck. Dudes all train in fucking pushing keyboard, fucking 
buttons and fucking crying because their channel got attacked by a dude who they slagged off their film, then no, probably a woman's faster than them, aren't they? They don't even fuck. They ain't even fucking <laughs> done any fucking exercise since there was fucking teens. But yeah. It's gonna be shit. We all know that. But as I say, soynad bitches. They're like, right. You like talking like you're pissed and going on about fucking Gal Gadot. Well, you're gonna love fucking a female fucking Shazam. What? Yeah. You'll fucking love a female Shazam. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, I love my female Shazam. Oh, I remember when I was into my Gal Gadot. And I love the way it's transformed the action to female. Just because I fucking got some soy-nerd bitches to think that I was pissed all the time when really I was just putting on a drunken accent. It talk about fucking getting pissed anyway. Let me get pissed. Oh, yeah. Let me get pissed and fucking talk about fucking... Ooh, remember the time when Gal Gadot showed me her fucking... Lovely legs in Wonder Woman. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, you fucking do, you sad cunt. Because you, you don't want to remember all the prostitutes you pay for. Oh, look at you like a disgusting piece of shit. Because you can't get fucking laid w without paying money in advance and all. But... That's life. If it weren't for sad cunts, prostitution wouldn't be a thing. So, you know, even though the sad bastards happen to use prostitutes, if they didn't, then we wouldn't have prostitutes. And so, if we ever do find ourselves so repulsed to women that we need to use prostitutes, then maybe fucking... We will thank these fucking sad bastards, you know? And it saves them go going out raping, even though fucking most of these soy-nerd bitches couldn't rape a woman because they'd get manhandled by the woman. They'd probably jump on her and then get thrown fucking completely off her. <laughs> And she's like five foot two and um, weighs 90 pounds. Oh, come here, you love. Get in these bushes. Oh, I don't think so. Fuck you. And flying away. Oh, I remember the time I tried to grab a little petite five foot two lass in the bushes but she chucks me like 20 foot because my little puny soy bitch body couldn't have any muscle mass yeah well anyway back to fucking this story which i don't even really want all right this is fucking in the headline, in it. Look at that. But oh, I'll, I'll read a bit. It looks like DC set to replace Billy Batson with a new champion of Shazam. I say new. Um. So let. So let. For an upcoming series of the same name has revealed the publisher's plan to elevate 
his sister go to the role of as mightiest mortal. Ooh, isn't that nice? Can't wait for the films. Because you know they're, well, you know they won't be coming out, but you know they'll be trying to fucking bring them out. And if they do bring them out, well, yeah, there we go. Another female fucking action film that's going to fucking flop. In an exclusive preview of the new ongoing indeed titled The New Champions of Shazam and written by Josie Campbell. Now, I, I don't say it. All women writers write fucking chick flick shit. I'm not saying that. With an art form of even Doc Shannett, Polygon reports that the book will see Mary Marvel take over the responsibilities of the wizard chosen one. Ooh! Sound familiar? Oh, I remember when I saw Mary Marvel take over the responsibilities of the wizard's chosen one. It was beautiful. I forgot my fucking escort girls with me. They agreed with me, even though if they had fucking not agreed with me, they were not getting paid. They would not be getting paid that night. Okay. And then I watched Wonder Woman 1984 again. A representative of the female form. Yeah, well... We, we all know which fucking sewing bitches will be watching this fucking... Oh, I can't wait for Captain Gailey Marvel to come out. I don't want to look at anything that I can't fucking pay to fuck. Whilst I drink fucking whiskey. Hmm. Right. Um, this isn't unprecedented <laughs> for her. After making her first appearance, look at this. No, this is this is where the Soynet bitches got started. Is is where anyone with any fucking testosterone and fucking you know, like what the fuck, man. They did say, what the fuck is this? We're not watching this. We're not even going to fucking... Because I didn't even know there was a fucking Mary Marvel myself. Until I've seen this. Until, I, until I've just noticed, oh, she's going to replace him. A character that I've never fucking heard of. Didn't even know fucking existed until about a few hours ago when I read this article. You're taking over Captain Marvel. Fucking great. And you don't think the soy-haired bitches are fucking ruining fucking entertainment? Because I fucking know they are. See, if all these soy-haired bitches did what I did, just fucking slag this off for being gaily shit, they wouldn't even try this. But they're not, are they? No. What they're doing is fucking watching that shit. Oh, I remember when I went to go see Wonder Woman 1984. I told everybody it was a pile of shit, but secretly I watch it every night. Yeah, I bet you fucking do. Well, anyway, yeah, my experience is it was comics. Captain Marvel Adventures number 18. Only took them 18 until it was like, right, let's see how these sign 
bitches what want a fucking little gale for their fucking hero. Let's see how, how many of these Sony bitches want the fucking body physique of a 14 year old girl. Oh, all of them, apparently. Sorry, Ned. Fucking bitches. This is how Eternals got fucking made for these sorry, Ned, bitches. In 1942. The soon... She soon appeared in her own comic. Oh, sorry, Ned. Bitches, oh, what that? Apart from girls, but she soon appeared in her own comic by creators Otto Bender and Mac Swayze, lasting for 28 issues from 1945 to 1948. Oh, <laughs> It only lasted three years, 28 issues. Whoa! You're thinking a little 14 year old girl? Oh, didn't sell as well. Uh, unfortunately, the one of these signed bitches are uh, the one. Allowed to be signed bitches because oh there was there was them around, but there was laughed ridiculed and deservedly called a fucking homosexual back in them days. Now I'm not saying that I would have called them one, but I'm just saying, if you if if you're reading stuff for women, and you're a dude, you probably will be assumed to be a homosexual. But anyway, it's been so long since she's had her own book because she's shit. Now they didn't put this in, but it's been so long since she had her own book. But all these signed bitches that fucking love go watching Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984 and fucking Bears of Prey and any other fucking girly chick flick with a fucking half decent shag bit in it. Um, but. She's now getting a new fucking reboot. Oh, it's fucking pathetic. And what the fuck? Said this would be a good idea. Sign-head bitches. And this is the thing. There's too many sign-head bitches out there who won't fucking complain about this. They'll all be like, oh, well, well let's give it a walk. I, I can't, I can't say it'd be oh, too bad. I've got to watch it. No, you don't have to fucking watch it. You know it's going to be bad because it's got a fucking woman in it. It's like any fucking physical act, activity that ain't more than a hundred miles long. Women ain't going to do that good in it. If it ain't fucking long distance and very, very long distance running, we're talking over 100 miles. 150 to 200 miles. Or doing the splits on the fucking high beam, you know? Then they're going to do pretty shit compared to... Oh! Sorry, Ned, bitches. I've told you about them. But no one really cared. Because 
it won't affect in their fucking entertainment because most of them love this girly shit. I think most of them do, want these Sony bitches so they they can say, oh yeah, well I didn't I didn't want this to be made, but you're watching it. Ah oh, yeah, you fucking what? Yeah, you fucking Sony bitches. Oh, honestly, Ugh. and they wonder why they fucking get shit from me well that's one don't think the sign head bitches that's the funniest thing it's like because some of the because these youtubers are sign head bitches they don't think the sign head bitches it's like no you're right sign head bitch you just don't want to admit it which understandable because i won't fucking want to admit it I'd fucking deny it like fuck. I'd be like, no, I ain't no sign head bitch. I'll fucking lower my voice to prove I'm not no sign head fucking bitch. But anyway, you know, sometimes you're in our own book, yeah. We all fucking know why. Since before she was a DC prop of. So, you know, I, I say before she was a DC fucking signed fucking um, honey trap. Says so Shana, we're hoping to have the fun and the creative energy behind so much of the early stuff that Banda did. But bringing that to a more modern audience. More modern soy bitch nerd audience. And try to make it more soy bitch nerdy for the little kids. And young soy nerd bitch adults today. Well, he's talking about soy nerd bitches. Just label them Soynade bitch. They've got a body of a 12 year old girl, a man of a nine year old boy, and the sexual attraction of a hamster. That's their fucking lives. Of course, fucking Mary Marvel's going to be interesting for them. For a long time, I just don't have any interest in returning to anything Shazam um, related, Shana added. But I've always thought Mary should be the lead of the book for a while. Yeah, for a long fucking while. Because you need to side near these bitches because bad news for you, yeah? Some of the, as I say, some of these soy nerds are like going to bite the bullet because, as I told them, you've got fucking a choice. You can either be a soy nerd bitch or man the fuck up. You can't, you, you can't be fucking both. But anyway, uh, well, that was the one time I would return if it ever happened. Fuck you, we don't want you to return. We want you to fuck off with your signed bitch fucking friends. Why don't you go get drunk? Hire out some prostitutes. Make them fucking look at you like they want to have sex with you. And keep Mary Marvel to your fucking self. Honestly, but this is all right for me because if Sony bitches weren't doing this, I'd well, 
what fun would I have in just fucking reviewing? Even though it is fun, but it's not as fun as fucking calling out signed bitches. So, as I say, there'll always be signed bitches, and so my fun's never gonna stop. But Campbell explained who Mary is. We don't give a fuck. And wants to be in the very heart of the comic, but so uh roles that she either been forced into has a uh, willingly joined into. It's really shining shining a light on it and her wants and desires as someone who was part of a superhero team doesn't have her powers get them back and then she's got a lot of choices suddenly displayed in front of her that she's going to have to make a real fast said Campbell up right yeah well she's a bad for a start if you want to be a superhero Get rid of them tits because they're getting in the way. But then it. Then I am surprised. So she has got tits because usually they will be getting rid, rid of them tits. It's like, no, no, no. Women can't have tits and fucking action comics no more. Yeah, the new championship, Shazam number one, goes on sale in February. Right. So we can just laugh at that bastard fucking. <laughs> Although it's the first issue, you got them sad fucking. I have nothing else to do but buy a first issue of a comic that I don't even know what the fuck it is, but it's the first issue. You got them sad cons will buy it. Yeah. Fucking. That's why. I... The like um, reissue fucking books to first issues because I know sad cunts will buy a first issue, don't matter what the fuck it is. I'm thinking of just wiping my ass like a few times and then just taking pictures of my wiped ass and releasing that as a comic as a first issue. People will buy it, it's shit. There's no fucking plot line. There's no action in it. It's just shit. Shit on a fucking piece of toilet paper. They'll buy it. Oh, it's the first issue. Maybe the second issue might get a bit more exciting. You sad fucking signed bitch. Uh, but if it weren't for them, I'd have to fucking just do fucking action film reviews, which I don't. But so keep keep being signed bitches. Why don't you? In fact, I think it's getting worse because I've seen a few things where it's like fuck. Funniest thing is when they're all fucking, oh, I'm in Swanime now. It's like, it, it's chick flick anime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you sad fucking soynet fucking bitches. Oh, oh. Maybe there's always trouble in Jamie. Oh, she doesn't know. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, uh, okay. Smaller tits, fatter rips. No, thank you. Even though I have had sex with women like that, but. <laughs> you don't want to draw them. This thing, I mean, sad sign head bitches. They don't want to fucking see, like, 
not attractive women because um, if they were, you see, with sad sonied bitches, this is a fantasy for them. They're never ever going to get themselves a female who looks like that. We've got nice tits, nice body, nice hair. No, they're probably going to get themselves somewhat like this, where she's a bit podgy. She, she probably had an eating disorder. That's why her tits aren't grown. And um, she's got chunky legs, which I'd fuck all of her. In fact, I have fucked all of her bears like her, and even worse. But soy-haired bitches, they don't want to look at that. They they want to imagine themselves with a good-looking bear. But soy-haired bitches and that, you know, that's how, that's how it goes. Are you excited to see Mary Marvel set up to fill the big red cheese shoes? I don't even know there was red cheesy shoes, but let us know your thoughts on social media or in the comments below. No one's really said that, I don't think. Yep. I don't know. But yeah, there we go. Fucking Sonyed Bitchified. <laughs> oh, I should have muted there, but. <laughs> I fucking mute this time though. Yeah, so there's another fucking franchise that's gonna go right down the drain because they think there's enough soy nerds for it to be sold. And even if there weren't any soy nerds, the thing came right. Well, we're going to have to release it. So some fucking soy bitch will pick it up and be soyified. Well, that's them. That's their lives. Let's put it this way. If there wasn't fucking reading female fucking comics, they'd, they'd probably commit suicide or be raping. So, so let, let's not fucking, let's say, we don't fucking say they can watch this. We, we don't, I don't say that. I'm just saying I wouldn't. Well, I'm saying I fucking wouldn't and I fucking don't. But if you want to do that, fair enough. You know? What else? You, you, you're not going to have sex with women, so why don't you just read them in comics, you know? At least you're able to communicate more with women when you know what they look like anyway. Because most of these sign bitches, if they didn't see these women in the comics... What what would they know about women, apart from obviously having a mother or sister? But apart from that, they don't fuck all. They probably read this to see what women think. Well, she's a superhero. She she's she, she's thinking you're a signed bitch. But anyway. That's enough of that. Fucking Sawyers. Fuck. I could go on. I feel like going on like just a two fucking hour, three hour run. Get this to like a four or five hour stream of me just fucking Sawyers, bitches. But as I say, and not really too bothered because 
if there wasn't these soy nerd bitches and I wouldn't have a- anyone to fucking educate. I feel like I'm a teacher. I'm educating these soy nerd bitches in how to be more masculine. How to maybe have sex with a real woman. Fucking hell. Yeah, but that one's real hard though for them though. I'm not promising him that. No fucking way. You might die a virgin. I can't do miracles. I'm not a miracle fucking worker. But, hey, stomach up. Bit more masculine. I saw this. Oh, yeah, this looks good. Don't look too bad. Got Bruce Willis in anyway. Does get full screen on here? Yeah, it's Bruce Willis and um. Jesse Metcalf is no sort of film. Um, December the 12th, I think it's released. It, it says it at the end anyway, so. But called Fortress. Don't look too bad. Got Bruce Willis in it. And so, even though Bruce Willis is getting old now, he. He knows he can't be the main fucking star much, you know. Uh, he's still got him in kicking ass a bit in that. So, yeah. Okay. Play this. All right. Lionsgate and all. Yeah, looks like a bit of a love story with these. Yeah. Yeah, you go with that, Kenny, though. Sirens. Yeah, he's playing a bit of a soy bitch. Probably man's up at the end, doesn't he? Yeah, the world, you daft bastard. Yeah. There's a shooting in that. Yeah. Mindless deaths, that's what I wanted to film. Yeah. Yeah, we go. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, uh, looking too bad. Like, Bruce Willis might die in it, but yeah, probably gonna be acting. Yeah, yeah. Hey, bit, yeah, get out, fuck off, bitch. <laughs> That's like real life. Uh, Yeah. yeah. He's looking a bit fucking soy in parts. Yeah, December the 17th. Well, not the 12th. 17th. Here. But yeah, we'll see that bit where the bear gets just fucking slammed down. Like, like this is like what would happen in, in most fucking fights where a bear thinks she's fucking <laughs> super tough. Here we go. Fuck off, bitch. Here we go. Fuck off. 
Cool. Another gun, though. Uh, uh, yeah. The fortress. Yeah, Bruce Willis is going to be having fun. It looks like Bruce Willis in this probably does take out a few, though, doesn't he? But you don't know if, if that's in the first 10 minutes or something of the film. And then he gets killed. Then the rest of it is that little soy-nerd bitch being fucking <laughs> cocked all over by that bird. Until the end, because obviously you can tell that the son has to man up because like his dad's getting fucking <laughs> all the kills yeah and how, how old bruce willis now he's he must be in his 60s so yeah 60 year old your 60 year old dad making you look, look like a soin head bitch well yeah you fucking Got a man up. To be a time where it's like, yeah, man the fuck up, you little bitch. Or else this film's gonna be shit. Well yeah. Don't look too bad that I'm thinking, yeah, fucking I'll I'll give it a walk. We'll be expecting how great from it, but Bruce Willis. Shooting people. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch some of that. Yeah, those are, um, they were Spider-Man trailer came out. Where was it? Uh, there we go. Two hours ago. Yeah, a new trailer from Marvel Spider Man No Way Home. Swings into action and wow! Let's see it. Yeah, look at that black Spider Man suit with a fucking. which looks like um, Doctor Strange fucking bracelet things. Go screen it. Pause it and all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is what I don't want this film to be like just him and Mary Jane just talking. But well, there's a bit of action there. Yep. Fucking different universes. Oh, okay. mm. Yeah. 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 Fuck 
okay now. We don't want talking in this realm. <clears throat> Spider Man Octopus, look at the Spider Man. Okay, I'm going to Oh, so Spider Man's just going to fuck everyone off now, isn't he? <laughs> Tom Holland, you had to piss around, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, you're gonna have to out you because you're Spider Man. Even though I don't have to save the enemies. Oh, and I'd let Mary Jane go because, like, fuck. She. Eh, eh, fuck. Oh. Right, Mongy Mary Jane. Not like Ma Mary Jane's full of fun, but. Mm. December the 17th, right. Oh, something else, man. No, the cast reacts to the trailer. With the mouths open. Well, yeah. Watch that one again. Fucking soppy ass love story, fucking bit. But looks like some good action though, isn't it? That's it. Uh, Spider Man films, they always just spin webs like fucking getting swinging around, being the shit out of people. I love him being the shit out of people, just make sure they don't fucking win or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have thought Dog would be like, hello, Peter, that's a new fucking outfit you got. <laughs> You're not the Peter Parker. You're that Tom Holland Disney Peter Parker. I know a few words starting with get the fuck out of the Spider Man fucking franchise. Mary Jane should just be fucking there for Peter to fucking save, not to talk. Yeah. Look like there's a, a fight between, well, not much of a fight, but a bit of a battle between Spider Man and Doctor Strange. Yeah, Green Goblin, yeah. Electro. And obviously, Doc Ock. Oh. Think the Sandman there and all. Yeah, let her go. Let her go. Let her fucking fall. Hit the bottom. Get her out of the fucking franchise. She, you can fuck off into the Doom franchise. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Let's say, Spider-Man films. You can't fucking go wrong. 
All you, all you got to do is just make sure Spider Man spinning webs, fucking. You, you don't beat up people, but it usually gives them a bit of a, a kicking and a slinging around, and then he'll fuck them up where a lot. Yeah, he, he don't really beat them up, but he fucks them up in the end anyway. Like. So, yeah, as long as you get fucking Peter Parker as Spider-Man. Because, like, you get... We don't want to see Peter Parker just fucking talking to Mary fucking Jane. Like, yeah, two hours of that. Don't fucking think so. Yeah. But yeah, once you just get Spider Man spinning webs, like not beating the shower of people, but giving them a few web slings and a few kicks here and there, and then fucking them up at the end. Yeah, you can't go wrong. I mean. The effects look fucking good, so you know they've got the ability to do what the fuck they like. So no excuses for not having fucking action scenes in it. So yeah, I think I'll be going to see that defo. Because um, one of my mates, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go see that when it comes out. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to go see it. So, don't know if it'll be when it gets first um, released, but it'll be like a, a week or, t- or so, but no. Well, yeah. It'd be like a few days probably after it gets released. So, you know, you get the fucking crowd because you don't want to. Because I don't mind going in a cinema and uh, with a big crowd. As long as the big crowd ain't going to be fucking oohing and ahhing and crunching crisps, which most of them fucking do nowadays. So it's better to go up. In a small crowd nowadays, so you are going to get the, the chit chatter and fucking crunching of crisps, but it won't be as bad as when it, it's a full house. But I'll be down for that one. I'll be doing a review with spoilers, obviously. Full spoilers, well, not full spoilers, but. 80% spoilers because I always fucking forget little bits of, of the film. It's like when I do a full review, and that is like a full 80% review. I get like the beginning, middle, and end. So, you know, I practically am doing a full spoiler, but there will be like little bits in it where I forget, you know, because fucking. Some bits of it in there. I should I should really take a fucking like notepad and a pen just to like jot down little fucking reminders. Oh yeah. And so it'll be easier for it. But it's one of them where at the time I'm I'm just like watching it and I can remember most of it, you know. It's just that some some bits, some some details get a bit lost, especially if it's fucking boring. Because that's the thing with that spot. I think I think there's going to be little, well, not little. I'm I'm thinking more medium sized fucking boring bits where it's just him talking, where like Tom Holland basically being Tom Holland, like. Um. 
nervous and um, non-confident sort of babbling and then there'll be Mary Jane listening to that shit and so that them bits I might not fucking remember I'll be like oh yeah 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 there was that bit but fuck I forgot that <clears throat> well I should I should as I say get 80 percent of the film I I always get the beginning middle and end of the film anyway so just them bits in between. But yeah, I know I'll be calling it a night because like reviewed um the Bruce Willis Fortress trailer. Had a look at the Spider Man um Far From Home trailer. Yeah, uh, had a look at the article with Shazam being replaced by his sister, and obviously had a good sort of fucking talk about the fucking Scott Atkins, Dolph Lundgren, and Ryan K. What ten film, um. What was it called? Section 8. Yeah. And Section 8, spell 8, not the number 8, as in it, it being um, portrayed as. Because, as I say, there is a film called Section 8, but the 8 is done by the number 8, instead of the spelling eight and obviously it's a different film so it's section eight spelt eight you know uh, not the not the number eight the spelling of the number eight not number eight but yeah so, thanks for watching, and like, um, no one really left any messages or out, so I don't want to put up on that, but um, I'll be doing another stream, like, um, may, and po probably posting a video and all, because I'm trying to do a live stream and a video a week, and so I'll be doing another live stream. Next Tuesday, probably, hopefully in that. Uh, I don't know what time. It's between Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday mornings. So, it'll be that time. Definitely, though, I'll be trying to do it on a Tuesday. And, uh Hopefully, I'll be posting a video and all. Um, so, I'll say try and get like a video and a live stream a week sort of done. And that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.